Hey there! Today, in this video, we will show you some interesting World War II finds and, of course, we'll tell you how they were discovered. Let's cut right to the chase! A German tractor on September 25, 2021, in Russia, in the Novgorod region, a search party managed to pull a Wehrmacht tractor out from the Volkhov River. As it turned out, the tractor ended up at the bottom of the river during the World War II. It fell through the ice in the harsh winter of 1941. At that time, in December 1941, Soviet troops launched a counteroffensive and pushed the German troops across the Volkhov River. The searchers had previously been working on the other side, trying to find a Soviet T-34 tank, which, according to local residents, also turned out to be at the bottom of the Volkhov. The search was unsuccessful, but on the opposite bank of the river, on Spak, the group stumbled upon a German artifact. It was also possible to establish the affiliation of the tractor to a specific enemy unit. The discovery of a soldier's belt in the car made it possible. According to the brand on the buckle, the tractor belonged to the 2nd Company of the 1st Battalion, the 10th Tank Regiment of the 8th Wehrmacht Panzer Division. Also, about 40 Czech hedgehogs were found at the bottom near the tractor, as well as most mechanical components, including the radiator. According to experts, the vehicle is in good condition, despite the fact that it has been lying at the bottom for 80 years. A German truck A lot of military equipment lies at the bottoms of water bodies and swamps. But sometimes there are also ordinary civilian cars that were used by the military to transport weapons and ammunition. Today they are of great value, as there are only a few of them left. One such find was recovered from the river in very good condition despite the fact that the car had been in the water for 75 years. Local residents show the searchers the place where the truck was located. It turned out that many of the elderly residents knew about this car in the river since, after the war in the dry summer, parts of the truck were sticking out of the water. Local residents managed to remove the bonnet from the truck and pull out the seats. Everything else was in full completeness, even the original license plate remained. The truck is currently in the process of reconstruction. Soviet Isle 2 attack aircraft We've already told you about the Soviet Isle 2 attack aircraft discoveries, and here is another story about this flying tank. It got this name for its fully armored body and high firepower. The L2 was armed with bombs, cannons, and rockets. In December 1941, two single-seat L2 aircraft took off from the military airfield in Borki. The task was exploration and attack. An experienced 20-year-old junior lieutenant Menshenin didn't return to the base. His leader, an experienced pilot Markovtsev, searched in vain to locate him. After some time, it became clear that the missing aircraft fell near the village of Balshaya Volga. The plane burned down and the pilot died. The deceased pilot was buried nearby in the woods and then reburied. Unfortunately, the exact location of his grave is unknown. After the war, local residents stole parts of the aircraft for their needs. But the searchers managed to find the most valuable. The armored capsule remained untouched. It was in excellent condition. To date, the body of the aircraft has been restored and installed as a monument next to the factory where the IL-2 was assembled during the war. A cache of weapons In Russia, not far from St. Petersburg, police officers found a warehouse with World War II weapons. The warehouse was found at an elderly man's residence, which is located not far from the regional administration's building. His friends could have known that the man was illegally storing weapons in the house. Most likely, they were the ones who reported this to the police. 
For many years, the pensioner has been illegally digging up old weapons at the World War II battlefields. He restored all the weapons found to working condition. The old man's collection included Mosin rifles, Mausers, PPSH submachine guns, PPS-43, MP-40, and Suomi. There were also a large number of pistols, revolvers, and even a dictator of tank machine gun and an SHKS machine gun, which was installed on Soviet aircraft. The police also seized several dozen cold weapons, cartridges, grenades, and gunpowder. Now the man faces jail time for illegal possession of weapons and explosives. Steyr Solofen By the laws, Russian citizens cannot possess an automatic weapon. But this doesn't mean that you should throw it away if you accidentally find one. It can be converted for firing blanks and used for the World War II battles reenactment, or simply converted into a model for a museum, as the diggers from Nizhny Novgorod did. One day these guys came across a rare find – Solothurn machine gun. It was in poor condition, some parts were lost and some were damaged by the explosion. The guys have been working on its recovery for a long time. After all, all the machine guns of the 20s, 30s are low-tech, as the restorers themselves said. Their friends from Voronezh provided great help in searching for spare parts. Since the Hungarian army, armed with such machine guns, was completely defeated on the territory of this city, the necessary parts come across much more often there. And here is the resulting museum exhibit. The Aerial Bombs Volgograd During the World War II, this city was called Stalingrad. And here, in 1942, one of the largest battles of the war unfolded. It has been 80 years since those terrible events, but dangerous finds continue to come across even nowadays. Over the past year, sappers have destroyed more than 1,500 bombs, mines and shells that came across during excavation and building work in the most unexpected places of the city. The German high-power bombs which were dropped on the city are a great danger. One such munition can destroy an entire district of the city. Police officers often have to evacuate hundreds of residents during the work of extracting dangerous finds and transporting them to the military training ground for destruction. A pistol An old man handed over a talker of pistol and ammunition, which he accidentally found in the belongings of his long-dead father, to the police. As the man explained, the weapons and ammunition were left by his father who used to be a partisan during the World War II. When the police officers asked if he was sorry to give away the last thing reminding him of his father, the man answered that he kept all the good memories in his heart and the gun can bring trouble if it falls into the wrong hands. The police promised him a monetary compensation according to the Russian law and to hand over the gun to the museum after checking. A message in a bottle The guys who were searching for the World War II artifacts found a message from the past. Digging up the German positions, they found a sealed bottle with various German papers from the war. No moisture got into the bottle and the papers were perfectly preserved. There was a lottery advertisement, a telegram from Sergeant Major Jägen Fischer from February 1942, and other documents. Now, it's not possible to say why the German soldiers left such a time capsule. The find was handed over to a museum. A gun in a jar the workers carried out some repair work in an old house, including ripping up the floors. A rusty jar was found in one of the rooms. Curious workers looked inside and found a gun. The Czechoslovak CZ-3645 pistol, which was produced until 1951 and used 6.35 cartridges, was stored in the jar. It was also called a pocket pistol for its small size. These weapons were produced to meet the needs of the country's army and police and were also exported. 
the weapon was in excellent condition as it lay in a dry place. The workers turned out to be the law-abiding people and called the police. A black digger. Another fan of the World War II arms collecting was detained by Russian police. A resident of Kaluga city was engaged in the illegal sale of weapons and ammunition found at the World War II battlefields. During the search in the garage belonging to his relatives, the following were found. A Dikterov hand machine gun, a PPSH submachine gun, a Mosin rifle, 16 grenades, two mortar mines, cartridges of various calibers, bayonet knives, the order of the patriotic war and the medal for courage. The man restored all the found weapons and prepared them for sale. According to the Russian laws, he now faces a prison term. A collector Another warehouse of rare weapons was discovered by Russian police officers in the city of Vladimir. Together with colleagues from the Moscow Criminal Investigation Department, they found and seized automatic firearms and ammunition in a 61-year-old man apartment. Most of the weapons were manufactured in the first half of the 20th century and were used during the World War II battles. There were also modern carbines and Kalashnikov assault rifles. The detained man stated that he was a collector and collecting weapons was his hobby. But why he needed mines and explosives, he never said. The German soldiers Many times we have told you about the incredible finds in the city of Kaliningrad and its surroundings. All sorts of things are still being found there. Weapons, ammunition, treasures, jewelry, ancient artifacts and even caches of dishes from the 19th and 20th centuries. So much has been abandoned, lost or hidden, that the finds will delight fortunate searchers for hundreds of years to come. In this story we will tell you about a find that was discovered last fall on the battlefields of the World War II. During the retreat at the end of the war, Germany lost hundreds of thousands of people killed and wounded, but continued to offer stubborn resistance to the Red Army, hoping for a miracle. But no miracle happened. Hitler's promised offensive and a new miracle weapon didn't appear. Thousands and thousands of German soldiers remained lying in the forests, fields and swamps across Europe. Last September a group of searchers managed to find the place of death of seven soldiers. Probably after the battle, the bodies of those killed were simply dumped into a crater and covered with earth without even looking at them. They had many personal items, words, and even weapons. Only three duct tags were found among the remains, one of which had no inscriptions. Therefore, only two of the dead can be identified, and the rest will forever remain unknown. A Black Digger Another black digger was detained by police officers in the city of Volgograd. For several decades, the man was engaged in excavations at the sites of battles in the Volgograd region. He restored all the weapons found to a combat condition. Police officers suspect him of illegal sale of weapons. At the time of detention, four German carbines, one Mosin rifle and one small caliber carbine were found. All the weapons were in good condition. Also, there were several samples of weapons which had not yet been fully restored as well as a huge quantity of cartridges of various calibers. A dead soldier Another interesting find was discovered this winter in the Stalingrad region. Two guys found a dead German soldier at the site of the 6th German Army of Paulus' defeat. The Wehrmacht soldier had a personal badge with his data and a wedding ring. Interestingly, the ring had a wedding date engraved on it the 21st of November 1942. The German soldier got married literally a month before the army, led by Field Marshal Paulus, perished. It's impossible to establish exactly when he died. This case sparked a heated debate on the World War II forum about how the deceased could have gotten married at that time. Some believe he got married while on vacation and then arrived to Stalingrad at the very end of the battle. Other searchers say that in the German army there were long-distance marriages. 
lovers could legalize their relations even if a bride was at home and a soldier was at the front. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Enigma In the last few years, Russian searchers have already found three German encryption machines in Kaliningrad region. Enigma is a portable encryption machine that was used to encrypt and decrypt secret messages during the World War II. A total of 40 to 100,000 copies were produced, but almost all of them were destroyed during the war. At the moment, it is a very rare find and any museum would like to get hands on it. More recently, during the filming of a future movie, another Enigma was found by a stuntman. There were also remains of a man, an award of the Third Reich, and a nine cross next to it. From the cross we can judge that it was an officer, most likely a cryptographer, who worked on this enigma. Probably an explosion happened nearby and the officer died, but enigma was damaged and covered with sand for 80 years. Now it is kept in Kaliningrad Museum. The German Headquarters Another incredible find was discovered at the site of the Stalingrad battle. During the excavation of the German bunker, a great number of wound badges and staff stamps were found. There was also an iron cross and many other military finds. Experts say that most likely it was a German staff dugout and the awards were prepared to reward the Wehrmacht soldiers. During the Battle of Stalingrad, losses on both sides were huge, and the wound badge was one of the most frequent awards among German soldiers. It is worth noting that the condition of the awards was incredible, but the documents had not survived. Now the searchers are working in the archives to find out more information about the battles on this section of the front. The Wehrmacht Uniform an interesting find was made by Polish relic hunters. Having inspected the attic of an abandoned house, the guys found a Wehrmacht uniform. Since the attic of the house was dry, the things were well preserved. Of course, some clothes were a bit eaten by mice, but it still was a great find for a home museum. Who and why kept these things in the attic, we certainly do not know, but the guys are to be congratulated for a great find. A German Trench Excavations in the Leningradsky district are always very interesting. Only the laziest people do not have a metal detector here. The possibilities are endless. There are artifacts that will be preserved for decades to come. And now the story from a digger himself. In September, we went to the places known by any digger. What can I say? Those who are greedier than us have been here and have even taken away the rusty iron. We had to dig deep into a ditch that was overgrown with vegetation. This trench has been used by German soldiers for a long time. There was a 5 cm layer of shells at the bottom. There was a lot of German ammunition and personal belongings. We were happy with the condition of the leather items, and at the very end of the day we dug out a hard German helmet in winter paint – great exhibit for any museum. We were especially pleased to find the PPSH-41. We thought that Germans themselves had abandoned the 1942 trophy. The condition of the weapon was incredible. It was resting in clay and even the blue in was preserved. It would make a great museum piece once restored. An aircraft This winter, Russian searchers found a plane that was destroyed in the Battle of Kursk. A local resident who found parts of plane in his garden led the searchers to the site. Extracting the parts of the plane was complicated by severe frost, which froze the ground to a depth of more than a meter. But even from some of the fragments, the searchers were able to determine that the plane was a Soviet IL-2. It was the most mass-produced aircraft of the war. More than 36,000 were produced. The IL-2 was originally designed to operate over the battlefield in direct support of ground troops. It has an armored port that protects the pilot from bullets and shrapnel. 
Despite its good survivability, the L2 was often shot down, having to operate directly over the battlefield and being slow and difficult to maneuver. Work to recover the plane will continue this spring. The searchers hope to find out the names of the pilots and what happened to them. An illegal workshop Polish police seized more than 40 firearms, including assault rifles and shotguns, several hundred rounds of ammunition, weapon parts, and items used for poaching. The police uncovered a channel used to transfer weapons, which led from the Svita Krasinski province to Silesia. An illegal weapons workshop was discovered there. 21 firearms and explosives were found. Some of the weapons had been excavated from the World War II battlefields and restored. A total of three men, between the ages of 41 and 66, were arrested in connection with the case. They were charged with possessing and trafficking illegal firearms. Another historical mystery has been revealed. We've managed to piece together the events that took place on the 30th of May 1943 in one of the regions of the Leningradsky district. Although the wreckage of the plane was discovered a couple of years ago, it's only now that we've had a chance to dig it out of the mud. And now we finally know all about the heroic pilot behind this amazing story. Such weather is a real gift to searchers. The January frost had the great swamp on ice. But now, with temperatures just above freezing, the equipment can finally reach the crash site. At any other time of year, even off-road vehicles couldn't get through. These places are remote, no wonder it's called the Great Swamp. Locals have been talking for years about the Soviet pilot who rammed an enemy plane in the skies over Ladoga on the 30th of May 1943. But it wasn't until three years ago that the place of his death was finally determined. In the middle of a swamp, a hunter noticed a small piece of an aircraft. The Russian Military Historical Society joined the search. For months, its members combed the marshes with metal detectors and felt around the bog holes. Divers cut through almost a meter of ice. They were up to their necks in frozen mud. And finally, the strut of the landing gear came up to the surface. It's in almost perfect condition. The swamp water had perfectly preserved the details – the machine gun, bent from the impact, the engine, and the propeller. And the most valuable find to the researchers is the factory serial number – it's readable. This means that documents can be found in the Ministry of Defense archives to determine the name of the pilot. Alexandra Petrovich Horoshkov, Guards Junior Lieutenant we believe that the place where the plane crashed is the place where the pilot died. During his lifetime, not posthumously, he was recommended for a medal. Most likely, in order to honor his memory, his comrades and commander didn't report him as missing in action. If they had reported him missing, he probably wouldn't have received the award, says Sergei Machinsky, head of the search department of the Russian Military Historical Society. Lieutenant Horoshkov was born in the region of Tambov in 1919. He was a graduate of an aviation school. He fought on the Leningrad front from the beginning of the war. On the 30th of May 1943, he flew out to cover the road of life. According to his comrades, Horoshkov was engaged in a dogfight with several German bombers. He refused to let them drop their bombs and forced them to retreat. But he was wounded. His plane was badly damaged, and it was on fire. He had only a few kilometers to reach the airfield. Further events were described by witnesses, residents of nearby villages and fighters from the road of life. All of a sudden, a Nazi Heinkel appeared in front of the burning plane, and our pilot, without a moment's hesitation, decided on a ramming attack. He was already wounded, his plane had been hit and was drowning in the smoke. He had every reason to bail out, but he saw an enemy bomber preparing to shell the port of Kabona, which supplied besieged Leningrad, and he made the decision to ram that plane, no longer thinking of his own fate. In the plane lifted, the ammunition was almost unused. The pilot was probably unable to fire. He was dying, but still, with all his remaining strength, he turned his plane head-on toward the enemy. 
Today's operation is a very important and touching moment. But as the search team says, it's far from the end of their work. The restorers promise to recover at least some parts of the plane. They have also set themselves the goal of finding the relatives of the pilot. The 24-year-old hero have never had the chance to start a family. His mother, Natalia Makarovna, never saw him return to his village. Now it can be said that the pilot is coming home. A soldier Russian searchers carried out an expedition to Karelia to search for soldiers who had fallen during the World War II. Soviet soldiers fought with Finnish troops in these places. A medical burial place of the Red Army soldiers has been found during the expedition. It contained the remains of 19 people who had died of their wounds while on their way to a military hospital. Among the many personal belongings, a death medallion was found. It contained a note written in pencil with the soldier's personal information. It turned out that the note didn't belong to the anyone of the dead, but to someone related to one of these soldiers. These data helped to identify the name of one of the deceased. It turned out that he was from the city of Leningrad. A lot of ammunition belonging to the deceased was also found in the grave, as well as medical supplies. One of the most interesting finds was a small glass bottle in which iodine has been preserved. This spring, the diggers will again go in search of missing World War II soldiers to bury them with honors in military cemeteries. Excavations in Germany A search for fallen Soviet and German soldiers took place in Germany several years ago. It was a joint expedition of the participants from a number of different countries. Searchers from Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Germany and the Baltic countries took part in the excavations and a lot of work was done. In one of the destroyed dugouts some Soviet soldiers and officers were found. All of them had awards with which their names could be identified. One of the officers had two medals on his chest. One was the Red Star Order and the other was the very rare Alexander Nevsky Order. It was awarded to Red Army commanders for outstanding achievements in organizing and directing military operations and for success achieved as a result of these operations. It's probable that the dugout in which the dead bodies were found belonged to the staff of one of the Soviet divisions. These young men didn't make it to the end of the war for only a couple of weeks. Now their names are known and they are buried in a military cemetery. The Pistols In Poland, while renovating a house in Slupsk, some pistols happened to be found. The Mauser C-96 and Viz-35 were perfectly preserved. They were wrapped in oil-soaked rags. They were hidden between the ceiling beams of a townhouse in the center of the city. Currently, the weapons are with the police under investigation. But museum workers not only from Slupsk, but from other museums want the weapons in their collections. The weapon was found by chance by construction workers who were renovating the attic, says Robert Chivinsky, the head of the Slupsk police. At one glance you can see that it is in very good condition. It's really something for the experts. The magazine and ammunition were with the gun. Now the gun goes to an expert. We need to be sure that it has not been used in a crime. It is interesting to know that this is not the only such find. Recently a Mauser C-96 was found during the renovation of a house in the academic district. They all know the Mauser had hidden it under the floor. It is not in such good condition, though. The Slupsk police have already received permission from the prosecutor's office to donate both guns to the Polish Army Museum. Weapons from the river A fisherman from Panzer region pulled up a suitcase full of ammunition from the bottom of a lake. It contained about 300 rounds of ammunition and a TT pistol. The Tokarev pistol is the USSR's first military semi-automatic pistol developed in 1930 by Fyodor Tokarev. Along with the pistol there were also cartridges for a small-caliber rifle, a Makarov pistol and a Nagan pistol. 
The man who found the suitcase handed it over to the police. Under Russian law, the man is entitled to a bonus for voluntarily handing in weapons. At the moment, the law enforcement officers are trying to establish to whom the ammunition and the pistol found might belong. They are also investigating whether these weapons were involved in the crime. The Dead Soldiers Last year, a six-day expedition to search for World War II soldiers took place in the Aral region. Their searches from Panzer, together with their colleagues from Aral, worked near the village of Durnevo. Several mass graves are located there. All of these fighters were lost on the 7th of February 1943. They were liberating the village of Durnevo in the Livinsky district. In spite of bad weather, the search team found 36 soldiers and established 28 names. In addition, relatives of one of the fighters have also been found. All the soldiers were buried with honors in the military cemetery. A German officer Another incredible find was discovered by searchers from the city of Kaliningrad in March of this year. It was the remains of a German soldier with weapons, personal items, and medals. Judging by the Walther pistol in his holster, he must have been an officer. The award of the Iron Cross was on his chest. A small box of explosives containing personal belongings was also found. The box was tightly sealed and had no moisture in it, so the condition of the items was incredible. The German officer also had a flask, a comb, a soldier's kettle, and a dog tag. From the dog tag, it could be determined that he served in the 333rd Reserve Infantry Battalion. Currently, the archives are being searched to determine the identity of the deceased and to find his relatives. Searchers say that if someone is still alive after the war, the chances of finding relatives are very high. Hi, everyone. World War II ended 75 years ago, but to this day lots of military artifacts remain in the ground and water. In this video we'll show you the most incredible World War II finds. T-34 tank In 2013, a broken T-34-76 tank was found in Ukraine in the Zhitomyr region. The T-34 is a Soviet medium tank of the Second World War period, produced in series since 1940. It was the main tank of the Red Army until the first half of 1944, when the troops received a new modification of T-34 with an 85mm gun. In this tank, the ammunition exploded and the combat vehicle was torn apart. Only the turret was intact, which was torn off by the explosion and thrown dozens of meters away. The huge crater from the explosion is still visible in the tall grass. The turret was deep in the ground and the military asked local residents to help with the excavation. After that, the artifact was lifted by an armored vehicle BTR-80 using a cable. A floating tank turret In the spring of 2020, Russian diggers conducted excavations in the Aral region, at the site of the breakthrough of the German defense by Soviet troops in 1943. More than 30 Red Army soldiers and officers were raised. The identity of several men was established. But an unexpected find was waiting for searchers at a depth of 2.5 meters. It was a T-38 floating tank turret. Apparently, the tank crossed the river and continued to attack the German fortifications, but was completely destroyed by a large-caliber shell or an aerial bomb. Now this find will go for restoration and may be used to restore the whole tank.
a cache in the ground. A few years ago, an interesting find was discovered by searches in the Kaliningrad region. After the end of World War II, the German city of Königsberg was transferred to the jurisdiction of the Soviet Union on October 17, 1945, and renamed Kaliningrad in 1946. In 1945, when Soviet troops approached, many local residents hid their property and retreated with the German troops. They hoped to return after the war and dig up their belongings. Diggers were able to find one of these caches. It was made in an iron barrel and is perfectly preserved. The most valuable thing in this find was a large amount of silverware, spoons, forks, knives, sugar tones and other items. Of course, the entire find was shared among the friends. A German bomber in 2018, divers found a sunken World War II bomber of the coast of Crimea. Heinkel German medium bomber, one of the main bombers of the Luftwaffe. There were also modification of torpedo bombers and attack aircraft. In total, more than 7,600 copies of different modifications were built, which makes this aircraft the second most popular bomber in Germany in World War II. This one lies at a depth of 45 meters. It was shot down by Soviet P-39 Air Cobra, which were supplied to the USSR under the land lease program. The German pilot managed to land the plane on the water. Of the five crew members, only the navigator managed to survive. In 2000, he came and tried to find out something about the bomber. But after learning that the plane hasn't yet been found, he flew back. At the moment, the plane ascent is not planned, as there is a great risk of destruction of the bomber's hull. KV-1 On the night of November 16, 2011, a unique engineering operation to lift the KV-1 tank from the bottom of the Neva River was completed. The KV-1 was produced from August 1939 to August 1942. It took part in the war with Finland and World War II. The museum staff found out that at the end of November 1941, the Leningrad Front moved 20 KV tanks, 10 T-34s and 16 light tanks to the bridgehead on the left bank of the Neva River. The KV-1 heavy tank, with the serial number M5200, being the part of the 2nd Tank Battalion of the 123rd Tank Regiment, was on the list. The tank had almost empty ammunition, only about 10 shells and several discs for the DT machine gun left. It became clear that the tank participated in the battle. Also, there were traces from the shell hits, and the gun barrel was damaged. The tank was delivered to the museum, and its disassembly and restoration began on the same day. After sandblasting the tank body, its factory number was red. According to the documents, it was found out that the crew of this tank destroyed three German tanks, and when the gun barrel was damaged, rammed another Nazi tank, disabling it after it was evacuated from the battlefield and had to go for repairs. But when crossing to the other side of the river, the tank fell from a pontoon and sank.
In 2015, the tank was completely restored. One of the tankmen of this company was also found and was invited to the ceremony to complete the restoration. He personally knew the crew of this tank and participated in the battles near Leningrad together with them. Unfortunately, the veteran passed away in 2018. Nowadays, the tank is involved in World War II battles reenacting and filming films. More than 400 T-34 tanks stay still on pedestals across the former Soviet Union. Most are T-34-55s, taken from military storage and installed at different times for the next World War II victory anniversary. But sometimes there are tanks with real combat fate installed where they used to fight. One such tank is a T-34 from the small Karelian village of Sambatuksa. On June 21, 1944, the troops of the Karelian Front began the Sversky Petrozavodsky offensive operation, which was to liberate Karelia. The line of attack of the 7th Army of the Karelian Front was between Ladoga and the Nega Lakes. It was opposed by the Finnish troops, who put up a stubborn resistance in the conditions of forest and swamp terrain. The Red Army units began to storm the heights near the village of Sambatuksa on June 24, 1944. The hill dominated the surrounding plains, so it was of great importance, and the Finnish troops turned it into a powerful defense node. The approaches to the hill were defended by minefields, barbed wire, and anti-tank obstacles. On the top of the hill there were strong fortifications, several lines of trenches, anti-tank artillery, and mortar positions. The remains of these fortifications have survived to this day. The units of the 100 Guards Rifle Division of the 37th Guard Rifle Corps, supported by the 29th Separate Tank Brigade, took part in the battle for this fortified area. The frontal attack on June 24 was unsuccessful, so the next day the tanks of the 1st Battalion of the 29th Separate Tank Brigade made a counter-maneuver. Supported by artillery, the Soviets attacked the hill from the front and the rear simultaneously, driving the Finnish troops out of their positions. The battalion commander was Major Vasily Kolchenko. Tanks of the battalion suppressed five enemy firing positions, three bunkers were destroyed. During the attack, Kolchenko's tank hit a mine, all crew members were killed, only he was lucky to survive. While in the enemy's rear, Major Kolchenko continued to lead an unequal battle, killed 10 Finns, received 12 gunshot wounds, held out for 16 hours and was rescued by a tank that came to help. For this battle, Vasily Kolchenko was awarded the Order of the Red Banner, one of the highest orders of the USSR. In total, Red Army units lost about 150 men in the battles for Sambatuksa. They were buried in a mass grave on the very hill they had just liberated. Kolchenko's tank couldn't be restored, so it was left on the hill it had taken. Surprisingly, it wasn't sent to the smelting plant, as it was usually the case with the vehicles which had been destroyed in the battle. After the war, the tank was repaired to its best, and since then it continues to serve, keeping the peace for the 133 soldiers and officers of the Red Army, who are buried in the mass grave. This T-34 is equipped with a stamped turret from the Ural Heavy Engineering Plant. Only 250 of these turrets were produced, which is a drop in the ocean compared to 61,362 T-44s produced by the Soviet industry. The presence of the commander's turret and the combination of track rollers with external and internal shock absorption allow to judge about the time of issue, the end of 1943. A machine gun a few years ago, an amateur digger from Russia set out, as he himself says, not far from his own home, to walk around with a metal detector for half an hour. But almost immediately it began to rain heavily. Afraid of getting his metal detector wet, the searcher decided to return home. As he started to walk back, the detector started to sound. It turned out to be a machine gun. It wasn't deep practically under the moss. The find was in good condition and suitable for restoration. 
It was most likely a Czech ZB-26 submachine gun. The ZB-26 submachine gun is one of the machine guns that were developed after the First World War as a result of the experience gained during the battles. It was and is widely used in various wars and conflicts from the second quarter of the 20th century until today. It made its debut in the 1930s, Chinese Civil War, Spanish Civil War, World War II and Greek Civil War, as well as in the Middle East, still in use today, Indochina, Korea and South America, and has proven to be a reliable and robust weapon. It's unknown what the guy has done with this find. It's illegal to possess automatic weapons in Russia. A German officer in 2016, near the village of Novy Dvor, Polish military archaeologists discovered the remains of a German officer in full uniform with weapons and awards. Remains of his green uniform and buttons were well preserved. Judging by the Iron Cross, the soldier fought in the First World War and died at the very end of the Second World War. He also had a badge for his wounds and half of a death medallion. Most likely, he was buried by his comrades, who took the other half of the batch. Nearby, there was a Mauser 98 carbine, not badly preserved in the sandy soil. The officer was later buried in the military cemetery. A weapon cache An interesting World War II weapons cache was found in the Netherlands. There were several iron boxes with arms and munitions. There is not much information about this find. Most likely, it was a cache of partisans who fought against the Nazis. This is evidenced by the fact that the weapons were made in England and secretly supplied to the rebels by the British during the war. The weapons are not badly preserved, they were well packed in iron boxes and moisture didn't get inside. The Battle of Kursk Every year, there are search operations at the site of the famous Battle of Kursk. Boys and girls come from all over Russia to look for the dead soldiers on the fields of the World War II. In this story, we are going to show footage from just a few days of searching. The iron and bones of fallen German and Soviet soldiers are scattered all over the place. Everything can be found here. Large parts of tanks, ammunition, weapons and bones of soldiers are mixed here with the burnt earth. One of the most interesting finds this time was the remains of a German soldier with a dog tag. He wasn't buried, but simply abandoned in one of the trenches and covered with earth. A Soviet Maxim submachine gun, complete and in good condition, was also found. Even the thin metal barrel cooler box was intact. At the site of the T-34 tank explosion, many parts were collected. They will be used for the restoration. Several dozen fallen Red Army soldiers were recovered during this expedition. Some of them had death medallions with their personal data. Searchers say that usually it's possible to establish the identity of less than 10% of the found soldiers. Often, soldiers signed their personal belongings, which helps a lot in identifying the dead. In the winter of 1941, the KV-1 heavy tank slid off frozen logs, crossing the Don River, and sank. Later, when the barge moving along the river hit the tank gun and was damaged, it was decided to blow the tank up. An eyewitness said that after the explosion, the tank hatch flew high out of the water and fell into the water again several meters away. The explosion damaged the tank severely, but couldn't destroy it completely. Nowadays, there are only a few tanks of this model left. The KV series tank is a Soviet heavy tank from the Second World War. In total, from 1939 to 1942, 3,163 KV-1s of various modifications were produced. Three of them were equipped with a flamethrower instead of a machine gun. The tank had thick armor. The very first meeting with the KV shocked the Nazis. German tanks couldn't penetrate the armor, for example, a German 50mm tank gun projectile could penetrate the vertical side of the KV only from a distance of 300 meters, and the inclined front armor only from a distance of 40 meters. 
anti-tank artillery was also ineffective, so armor-piercing projectile 50mm Puck 38 anti-tank gun was able to destroy the KV in favorable conditions at a distance of only less than 500 meters. The fire of 105mm howitzers and 88mm anti-aircraft gun was more effective. In 2013, it was decided to raise this combat vehicle from the water. Specialists scanned the bottom of the river to determine the exact location of the KV-1. Due to the difficult bottom topography and weather conditions, the operation was postponed until spring. And finally, from the 29th of May to the 7th of June 2014, with the forces of the National Rescue Agency, KV-1 was lifted from the bottom and transported to shore. Local people provided active assistance to the search group. For experienced agency specialists, this was the 55th the most difficult vehicle recovery. Heat, strong currents and zero underwater visibility brought the most trouble. In addition, the tank was sandwiched between the pillars of the old crossing. KV-1, covered with a meter-deep layer of silt, had been pulled for four days with a specially designed winch, first 60 meters underwater and then 20 meters on the ground. A huge number of local residents gathered to watch the legendary tank recovery. After the operation was complete, the tank was delivered to the military unit, where it's being restored. Then the KV-1 will be sent to Moscow to the museum in Kubinka. It will be the first vehicle of this type in the famous museum exposition. German tanks After the fierce battles of World War II, a lot of military equipment was left in the ground and in the water. Tanks, armored cars and airplanes can still be found to this day. Sometimes the equipment is almost complete, sometimes it has to be assembled piece by piece. Tank parts can be scattered for hundreds of meters after ammunition explosion. In this story we will tell about a researcher looking for World War II artifacts who managed to gather an interesting collection of German tank and armored vehicle parts. For several years, the man dragged war artifacts into his backyard. It's worth noting the excellent condition of the finds. There is almost no corrosion on the metal. Inscriptions and German crosses marked with white paint are preserved on some parts. We do not know what the seeker did with these finds. Maybe the parts were given to the restorers or they are still in his backyard. T-70 tank the T-70 light tank came from Melitopol to St. Petersburg for a thorough and complicated restoration. The machine weighed 10 tons and was armed with a 45mm cannon. More than 8,000 tanks of this type were produced during the Second World War. They were in service on all fronts almost until the end of the war. During the liberation of Melitopol from the German troops and their allies in October 1943, it was this tank of the 22nd Gorts Tank Regiment that took part in the first battle. The tank was damaged, and after the battle was erected as a monument on the place where it fought its last battle. The commander of the tank, Lieutenant Gavrushov, died in the battle. It is a rare case when a tank was made a monument during the war. It became one of the symbols of Melitopol. Local citizens, brothers Yuri and Alexander, volunteered to take the vehicle for restoration. When the tank was taken off the pedestal, there was information that Russia planned to use it in combat operations. Needless to say, this is nonsense. These pictures show the tank completely disassembled and ready for restoration. The tank is being restored by specialists from the Russian Military Historical Society from the Kalabanov Museum of the Battle of Leningrad. These experts are very experienced. They have already restored more than 50 units of military equipment that were used in the Battle of Leningrad during the World War II. After the restoration, the tank will be brought back to its original place. West, the floating battery. 
Russian underwater explorers have confirmed the success of Soviet naval aviation pilots during the World War II. In the Gulf of Finland, divers discovered the German floating battery west sunk in May 1943. The man who had sunk the enemy ship never found out what kind of heroic deed they had performed. At a depth of 44 meters in the murky water, divers filmed the huge hull, the stern superstructure and the surviving anti-aircraft guns. This is the German floating battery West. It weighed over a thousand tons and was 60 meters long. On the night of September 15, 1943, three MBR 2 reconnaissance planes of the 58th Independent Air Squadron of the Red Banner Baltic Fleet attacked German ships conducting patrols in the Gulf of Finland near Big Tutors Island. The crew of one of the planes dropped 100 kg bombs and returned to the base. The command reported damage to an enemy ship. The bombing took place at night and the pilots themselves couldn't do much more than take a photo. They simply didn't see the consequences of their bombing. They thought the bomb fell somewhere near the hull. Maybe it damaged the ship, but in fact they had a direct hit in the bow. The bomb exploded in the hold and in a few minutes the ship went sideways and sank. And so a modest entry remained in that battle report. Bombardment of the enemy ship, no big victory was achieved. Three pilots, three Nikolais, junior lieutenants Karolev and Borisov, and Sergeant Zavizion continued their service. Karolev and Borisov died tragically later, in 1944, during an attack on a German convoy in the Gulf of Riga. Zavizion was transferred to a training regiment. The fact that now, even after 80 years, historical justice has been restored is of a great importance, say the members of the submarine expedition. A collector's cash An interesting story happened to two hunters in Ukraine in 2019. One beautiful, sunny day, two friends went hunting in the woods. They decided to shoot some rabbits for the day off. Unexpectedly, at the edge of the forest, the hunters found a pile of discarded equipment and a few other things. Probably someone decided to get rid of the junk in their old house, or maybe some relatives inherited their grandfather's house near the forest and decided to get rid of all the rubbish. Out of curiosity, the man decided to investigate this pile. While sorting through the rubble, they saw two suitcases, one of which contained a collection of German bayonet knives from the Third Reich. All the artifacts were in perfect condition. There was only a small amount of moisture mold on the metal. It was probably the hiding place of a collector, who had been collecting etched weapons, and stupid relatives just threw them away, making a dump right in the forest clearing. A cache of revolvers In Russia, in the city of Astrohan, while demolishing an illegally built garage, a municipal employee found an old newspaper dated 1918, in which two revolvers and ammunition were wrapped. One of the revolvers turned out to be a gallant Velodog. This is a Belgian pocket revolver with a concealed trigger designed by gunsmith Charles Francois in 1894. The gun was designed to protect cyclists from dogs, hence the name Velodog. The gallant Velodog revolver used weak cartridges with long cases, so it wasn't a combat weapon, although it was popular with women as a self-defense weapon. It was in production up to the outbreak of the First World War. The second weapon was the Nagant system revolver, which was widely used in the Russian Empire and later in the Soviet Union. It was produced in a number of enterprises of the Soviet Union up to the year 1945. About two million pieces were made. The model that was found is interesting, since it's one of the very first editions and it's now a collection item. Japanese Nambu Type 14 Pistol in June of this year, a Japanese Imperial Army Nambu Type 14 pistol was found by a man from Kazakhstan while he was digging on his land. 
This weapon was developed in 1925, based on the design of the Nambu Type 4 pistol. These pistols were the primary personal weapon of the Japanese Imperial Army in the 1920s through the 1940s and were produced until the end of the World War II. The pistol looked similar to the German Parabellum pistol. A 32-year-old man immediately called the police to report the find. Officers said that the weapon had been in the ground for years and had been severely corroded and was in no condition for use. After the removal of the basic rust, it will be preserved with a special solution and will be on its way to the local museum. How this Japanese gun ended up in Kazakhstan is anyone's guess. It is possible that it was brought by a soldier who fought in the Soviet-Japanese war in 1945 and captured the gun as a trophy. A cache This find was made in Tula, Russia. Several years ago, while repairing a roof, workers discovered a cache of cold weapons. A saber from the 19th century and several bayonet knives from the early 20th century were hidden in the attic. Since the attic was dry and there was no moisture, the condition of the finds was not bad. After a quick photo shoot, all of the artifacts were handed over to the local museum for safekeeping. Since the owners of the house changed several times, it wasn't clear who had hidden all this under the roof and for what purpose. This hiding place was probably made during the Civil War in 1917 to 1921. A pistol Another rare pistol was found by chance in Russia. A resident of Nizhny Tagil found a pistol in her house during renovations, presumably a military model Browning from 1903, caliber 9 mm. The magazine contained seven rounds of ammunition. The woman had been living in the house for the last 10 years and had no idea she had a gun under the roof. The gun was found during roof repairs. It appeared to be lightly corroded. The owner of the house turned the gun into the police, where it was sent for the forensic examination. The woman will receive a cash reward if the gun is found to be functional. Police are currently investigating how the gun ended up in the house, trying to determine the identity and whereabouts of the previous owners. However, it's most likely that the owner of the gun is no longer alive and that the cash was made during or shortly after the World War II. The Bandits' Hideout In Mordovia, the Russian FSB officers carried out an operation in the northern east part of the Saransk region in an abandoned garden community of Druzhba, where they found a cache of firearms and ammunition. The cache was found on June 29th under the floor of one of the cottages. There were two AKSU rifles, PSM pistols, Beretta, CZ, one of unknown model, revolver and a gun, homemade carbine, four handguns, main parts of Mosin rifle, five pistol magazines, two devices for silent shooting for AK and PSM, and more than 1,200 cartridges of various calibers. It was established that all this arsenal belonged to one of the gangs. The cache was created in 2010 and probably hadn't been used since then, as the weapons were found corroded. All weapons and ammunition found have been sent for examination. A cache of weapons In one of Russia's local history museums, a cache of weapons and ammunition was found during the repairs. Workers found a cache under the first-floor floorboards. The cache was most likely the legacy of the mansion's former owner, Mikhail Radishev. He was a man with a wide range of hobbies. In addition to his work as a city judge, he was a naturalist, photographer, ethnographist, and an enthusiastic hunter. Part of his collection of stuffed local exotic birds is kept in the regional museum of local history. After the 1917 revolution, Radishev was a member of the Committee for the Salvation of the Motherland. According to some historians, he was one of the organizers of the uprising against the Bolsheviks in the night from the 1st to the 2nd of January, 1918.
The hideout could have been made by him during the Civil War. Maybe it was in 1918 when Radishev left Khvalinsk for good. During the World War II years, when the museum was briefly run by evacuated Hermitage staff, Mikhail Radishev's weapons collection disappeared. PE2 Bomber Russian searchers have found one of the Soviet PE2 dive bombers. It took part in the battles of July 1943, then it was shot down. The serial numbers of the plane have helped not only in the identification of the plane, but also in the understanding of the circumstances under which it was shot down. Most parts of the plane were at a depth of more than 5 meters. An excavator was brought to the site to pull them out of the ground. It was used to lift the engine, which was not badly preserved. It was possible to read the number on one of the pistons. In the archives, the death of the P-2 was determined on the basis of the engine number. On July 6, 1943, this plane bombed a German tank column at the crossing. It was hit by anti-aircraft artillery and went into the ground at an angle of 80 degrees. The pilots knew that this was probably their last flight, as the crossing was very well guarded and strategically important for the German group. Work on the crash site and searching for the names of the crew members of this plane is still ongoing. The Revolver While repairing the roof of the gymnasium No. 1 in the city of Kuznetsk, Panzer region, construction workers made an amazing discovery. They found a Smith & Wesson revolver from 1874. The revolver was found in a hiding place on the roof of the building and was generally very well preserved. The gun was loaded and was only superficially corroded. Even the wood on the grip was perfectly preserved. According to local historians, it could have been hidden in the attic during the Revolution and Civil War of 1917. The found revolver is of historical value for Kuznetsk and will be transferred to the museum. An airplane In 1941, a Soviet plane rammed a German bomber and crashed into a swamp. Local historians were certain that hero of the Soviet Union Sergei Achkasov was flying the fighter. He survived the crash and was awarded the Order of Lenin for the ram. Russian searchers came to the site of the plane's demise for excavations. The plane not only hit the ground hard, it also burned up. Charred branches were everywhere and the paint on the aluminium parts of the fuselage had blistered. On top of that, the fighter plane was literally riddled with bullets. It was possible to determine from the wreckage that it was an I-16 aircraft. The guys now are in search of details with numbers and will have a look at the information about the pilot from the archives. Part of the engine cylinder was nearly undamaged. It is likely that its serial number will help to find out who was the pilot of this plane. Yak-1 and MiG-3 Participants of the International Military Historical Search Expedition Kalinin Front, working near Rzev, have recovered fragments of two Soviet frontline aircraft, Yak-1 and MiG-3, from the marsh. Both planes with the remains of their pilots were dug up at the very end of the expedition. The searchers were approached by local residents, who showed the places where the Soviet fighters of the World War II had crashed. As it is known from the medallion found in the swamp, the Yak-1 plane was flown by First Lieutenant Alexander Bolshakov. He didn't return from a combat mission on August 23, 1942. His plane covered Isle 2 planes to the Rzhev area. It is known that the pilot was born in 1918, was a holder of the Order of the Red Banner, and for his heroism destroying seven enemy planes was awarded the Order of Lenin. The second plane found was flown by First Lieutenant Ivan Lukin, who didn't return from a combat mission on October 8, 1941. He was born in 1915 in the Donetsk region. The remains of both pilots will be buried with full honors at the war memorial in Rzhev, 
or transferred to relatives if they can be found for burial in the homeland of the heroes. Isle 4 Last weekend, the search team of the Bransk Regional Department, together with a volunteer company, took part in the operation to recover the wreckage of the Soviet Isle 4 Long Range Bomber and the remains of the crew members. The bomber, with the number 10915, flew on the night of June 12, 1943, with 12 planes to destroy the Nazi railway echelons at the Bransk 2 station. The crew of four men didn't return from the combat mission. Pilot Mitelkin, navigator Pavlov, radio operator Kobzev, Gana Natochev. Their plane was shot down by enemy anti-aircraft artillery. During the working day, the searchers picked up the remains of the crew and fragments of the fighter from the ground. A huge amount of work was carried out to recover the wreckage of the plane and to find the remains of the crew at the site where the crash was discovered. The work was carried out by a large number of search teams, experienced searchers and very young people who have recently joined the search activity worked hand in hand. Thanks to the number on the engine, they were able to identify the names of the crew members of the bomber. A memorial obelisk has been erected at the site where the bomber crashed. The remains of the pilots will be buried with full military honors. PE2 In the summer of 2020, search parties found the crash site of a Soviet bomber near the city of Vyazma. The PE-2 is a Soviet dive bomber from the World War II, the main frontline bomber of the Red Army, the most mass-produced Soviet bomber. A total of 11,230 units of all modifications were produced. The place where the plane crashed was pointed out to searches by local residents. After the war, parts of the plane lying on the surface were gathered for their needs and large and heavy parts of the plane were buried several meters deep in the ground due to the impact. No remains of the crew were found in the wreckage. Probably they were able to leave the bomber by parachute. Several machine guns of 12.7 and 7.62 mm caliber with electric drive installed in the winds were found. From the found parts of the plane, the searchers made a monument to all dead pilots of the Second World War and installed it in the Moscow region. 106 soldiers Everyone who fell on the battlefields during the World War II is considered a hero by participants of search groups working all over Russia. Many of these heroes are listed in the archives as missing or killed in action. However, often there is no information about their burial place. Recently, a search team Zvezda was formed. The team helps to find and exhume the remains of dead soldiers. It also helps to discover the history of the war years. Many families are grateful to the team for finding their grandfathers and great-grandfathers. Last year, the searchers found a previously unknown grave with the remains of 106 soldiers of the Red Army. They found 35 medallions containing information about the dead. Unfortunately, it was possible to identify only 11 of them. And the relatives of 10 of them have been found. All soldiers were buried with honors in the military cemetery. The search continues. PE2 a few years ago, the searches from the city of Vologda completed the operation to recover the plane PE-2. Excavations were carried out in the Babayevsky district in a swamp. The work was carried out in winter. In summer, it's impossible to get to the place where the bomber crashed. The remains of the pilots, the second engine and the propeller of the bomber were recovered from the swamp. About 50 people took part in the expedition. There were cadets, historians, researchers from Moscow, Leningrad and Murmansk regions. Now the participants of the Vologda Searches Association are preparing an exhibition dedicated to this tragedy. The exhibition will include the personal belongings of the pilots, parts of the aircraft and documents. Two more P-2 dive bombers were found by searches at the site of the Battle of Ruzhev. 
It was determined that both PE-2 had been shot down by fighters by the traces of bullets on the aircraft parts. The bombers were engaged in a dogfight, which is evidenced by the fact that their machine gun ammunition was fully depleted. The remains of the pilots were not found. Most likely they parachuted out of the planes when they ran out of ammunition and the planes were badly damaged. Searchers managed to collect many parts of the planes, which will be sent to Moscow, to Vadim Zadorozhny's museum, for exhibition and possible restoration of such PE-2. German ammunition cache In the Republic of Belarus, a man discovered a cache of German ammunition from World War II during a walk in the woods. He reported the find to the police. Engineers were called to the site and removed 120 mortar mines, shells and grenades from the ground. They also found parts of firearms and more than 3,000 rounds of ammunition for various weapons. The police said that it's most likely that one of the locals made this cash after the war, or that it was partisans who used these weapons to fight the Nazis. A Finnish soldier this is the story from the words of the searcher. I once went with my wife to the forest and took my metal detector with me. For a long time I had no luck. My wife got tired, sat down on a rock and asked me to dig around her. I decided to dig a trench without much hope. After digging for a while I came across some bones. The first thing I came across was an animal skull. I turned it over in my hands and had the feeling that it was the burial of someone's pet. It was so disgusting that I wanted to bury the whole thing. Looking into the trench, I saw a bone too big for such a small skull and decided to dig a bit more and it turned out not to be in vain. The remains of the animal were on the top of the remains of a man. According to the first signs, it was a fin. Why the remains of the animal were on the man, what kind of animal it was and how it appeared in the combat trench remained a mystery to me. The dog tag was in the area of the chest. It was in bad condition since it was lying on the corpse for a long time. To be honest, I didn't expect to be able to read it, it was falling apart in my hands. But I took it home and decided to give it as proof that the remains were those of a fin. The dog tag was an early example, most likely from the battles of 1939 to 1940. The soldier was fully clothed, underwear, trousers, tunic, coat, there was a belt and a buckle. A gold wedding ring was on his finger. It was beautifully engraved with his wife's name and the date of their marriage. There were many marks on the ring, including the mark of the Viborg jeweler. When I got home, I decided to wash the dog tag. After the water acid procedure, I saw the first numbers, but I could read them only with great difficulty. The water literally washed it out, piece by piece. In the end, a small miracle was the result, the number was in place. T07128. Here's the answer from the archives. Everything came together, and the wife's name and the place of the residence and cause of death, shrapnel wound. I immediately remembered the shrapnel I dug up in the ditch. And here is Urha, himself. It's a photo from the Finnish memory book. 16 Soldiers Every year, a search for the dead soldiers of the World War II is held at the site of the Battle of Stalingrad. Between the rivers of Don and Volga, near the village of Kuzmichi, their search team worked for more than a week. They managed to find 16 Red Army soldiers. According to official data, more than 400,000 Soviet soldiers died in the Battle of Stalingrad. All found soldiers were killed by artillery fire. They didn't have time to dig good fortifications and were in small separate pits, which they were able to equip in a short time. A huge amount of ammunition was also found, most of it alive and dangerous. Any careless movement could lead to an explosion. 
the works will be continued next year. Aisle 2 in the fall of this year, searches from St. Petersburg found a Soviet Isle 2 aircraft. Thanks to the flight number and surviving documents, they managed to find out the name of the pilot and reconstruct his last flight. The place of the crash was determined from the archival documents. It was known approximately, but the guys looked at the satellite images of the area and found fallen trees. They assumed that they could have been broken by the falling Isle 2, and that turned out to be true. The searchers had to cut down trees in the difficult terrain in order to start lifting the parts of the plane. The wreckage of the plane was scattered over many meters. The engine and the cockpit were submerged in the swamp for several meters. The searchers managed to lift the cockpit of the plane, which contained the remains of the pilot. They found his personal weapon, a revolver of the Nagant system, a parachute, and documents. The order of the Red Star was on his jacket. The documents were perfectly preserved. The searchers were able to read the pilot's name. It was Nikolai Ivanovich Prasvetov, born in 1921. Nothing is known about the second pilot. Maybe he managed to jump with a parachute. At the moment, the search for the identity of the gunner and the relatives of the pilot is underway in the archives. A Soviet military tractor T-20 Another amazing find was made in Russia near the city of Tver. In July this year, a World War II artillery tractor was lifted from the Volga River during the construction of a new highway and a bridge. It was at a distance of 700 meters from the site of the bridge. T-20 Komsomolets is a light artillery tractor created in 1936 for transportation of 45 mm artillery guns alone with a crew. The design made extensive use of units and assemblies from the T-38 floating tank, which had just started to be produced. The T-20 was armed with a 7.62 mm Dikterov machine gun with 108 rounds of ammunition and had anti-bullet armor. To lift the tractor, divers had to spend a long time removing the silt. Then the river crane, which was fixed near the bank, began to lift the vehicle. Now restorers are working on this rarity. At the moment, there are only a few of these tractors left. Berger Panther In October 2023, a German tank from World War II was pulled from the river bottom in Poland. The tank was pulled from the bottom of the Nida River in southern Poland. According to experts, it's a Berger Panther, which was used for repair and evacuation work. Michal Kinshitsky, who organized the effort to bring the equipment to shore, learned about the site about 30 years ago. An old man showed my uncle the place where the tank sank, he said. Michal believes that such a rarity, if restored to working order, could be worth tens of millions of dollars. There are only a few Burger Panther tanks in the world, but this particular type is the only one, Kinshitsky said confidently. Local historian Conrad May said five such Berger Panthers have been stationed in the area since late 1944, when the Nazi 16th Armored Division awaited the Soviet advance. By mid-January 1945, the Germans were surrounded. In attempt to retreat, they began to cross the Nida River without finding a bridge. Most likely, the crossing was attacked by an aircraft and the Berger Panther was damaged and sunk. Parts of other German armored vehicles were also removed from the river, which can be used to restore other exhibits. The tank will remain in the Polish Army Museum in Warsaw, where it has already been described as an absolute rarity. Hoka Hurricane In the fall of 2022, Local residents in the Novgorod region were picking mushrooms and berries in the forest when they discovered the wreckage of a Soviet Isle 2 aircraft. A team of searchers arrived at the site to investigate where the plane had crashed. They found parts with numbers on them. 
From these numbers, it was determined that this IL-2 was shut down and the pilots bailed out with parachutes. The search team decided to continue the search, hoping to find preserved details that could be added to the museum exposition in the future. At one point, one of the men moved 50 meters away from the crash site and, using a metal detector, found a plaque with English inscriptions. Assuming that there could be no such place on the L2, the searchers decided to expand the search area. Immediately, the crash site of another plane was found. It was an English hurricane fighter delivered to the USSR under the land lease agreement. The searchers managed to get the engine out of the swamp. The team leader said that the pilot most likely tried to land the plane on the swampy ground, but couldn't. The plane turned over when it hit the ground. The number Z2977 was found on the engine and fuselage. In the archives, it was found out that this plane arrived in the USSR in June 1941. It was assigned to the 22nd Reserve Air Regiment. What happened to it after that and what happened to the pilot has not been found out so far. STG-44 An interesting find was discovered by Russian searches this fall. Probably it was someone's cash made immediately after the war or the weapon was abandoned by German soldiers during the retreat. A German 98K carbine and an STG-44 automatic rifle were found close to each other. The STG-44 differs from the World War II submachine guns in that it has a much longer range. This is mainly due to the use of the so-called intermediate cartridge, which is more powerful and has better ballistics than pistol cartridges. The STG-44 became the prototype for the further development of the promising small arms both in the USSR, such as Kalashnikov assault rifle, and in the USA with M16. For Russia, such a find is very rare, as such weapons began to arrive at the front only at the end of the war. Black Diggers in the spring of this year, in Poland, police officers of the Lublin branch of the state prosecution conducted operation to eliminate illegal weapons. During the last operation, they seized 134 firearms, 54 important weapon components, and almost 1,900 pieces of ammunition. Two men were arrested. They were excavating weapons left after the World War II battles. The men were restoring the weapons they found to full combat condition. They claimed to be collectors, but police suspect they were selling the weapons to criminal gangs. Another 38-year-old resident of the Sandomir's district hid World War II weapons and ammunition in his garage, which he also found during illegal excavations in the battlefields. One of his neighbors reported him to the police, and now he can face up to eight years in prison for illegal possession of weapons. Weapons at a construction site About a dozen unexploded World War II bombs, weapons and ammunition were accidentally discovered by a backhoe operator during excavation work. The man immediately called the police. The collection of weapons from about 80 years ago proved to be impressive. Grenades, rifles, ammunition, TNT, rockets, grenade launchers and anti-personnel mines were secured and neutralized by sappers. Support police officers published photos of the weapons found. They also asked for some rules to be followed. Unexploded ammunition should not be touched or moved. The discovery should be immediately reported to the relevant authorities, such as police. The police reminded that military explosives retain their properties regardless of the date of production. They can be resistant to time and weather conditions. Soviet DB-3 bomber It took two years for searches from Russia to recover the parts of an airplane that crashed during a combat mission in World War II from a swamp. The place where the DB-3 crashed was found by the Pyramid Search Team in 2017. The work was carried out in difficult winter conditions. 
The site was located in a swamp 15 kilometers from the coast and at a depth of up to 5.5 meters. The work in this place could be done only in winter, when the swamp freezes and it's possible to approach the crash site on the ice. Finally, the searches were lucky. The remains of one of the crew members were found. He turned out to be the first sergeant Ghana radio operator Alexander Asintsev. He was found with an address book, a personal diary, a union card, and a motorcycle driver's license with a photo. The searchers were able to identify a crew member by this license. A death medallion, model 1925, was also found, unfortunately blank, or the inscription simply disappeared over time. A number of personal items of the pilots were recovered from the swamp, along with aircraft parts and instruments. All were in perfect condition. In a swamp with no access to oxygen, things are preserved perfectly. One of the most interesting finds was a red banner recovered from the wrecked cockpit. The remains of the other crew members were not found. The gunner's weapon was not recovered as well. Usually this would be a TT pistol. However, some people believe that the searchers may have taken the weapon, since the pistol would be in good condition in the swamp and could be used for shooting. Dear friends, support our channel. You can do it by signing a sponsorship or by super thanks. Good luck and peace to all!